but why isn't it leaking? All right, so where we last left off, I had Tahiti's transmission in shambles and I was getting ready to kind of Frankenstein it together with the mishmash of parts from her blown up transmission and another blown up transmission I just had lying around in the garage. Now I have since gotten this thing together and in the next video we're gonna install it and I'm gonna just kind of show you guys exactly what I put into it um, before I actually assembled it. But um, yeah, before this thing can go back in Tahiti, we need to replace the fuel lines. So I actually have been kind of meaning to do this for a while and the only reason I'm tackling it now is because the transmission is out it's going to be a little bit easier to kind of get to everything. So when I did the brake lines I think sometime last year I did notice the fuel lines looked just as bad and to my knowledge I don't think the fuel filter has ever been replaced on that thing. Um, it probably has 250,000 miles on it. The lines are so crusty. I didn't even want to attempt to change it. So that's kind of the only maintenance thing I never really did to that thing was the fuel line, uh, the fuel filter, and the fact that the fuel lines look like total crap, let's just replace the filter and all the lines today. So what I have here is this kit I found off of eBay. It costs about 150, 160 bucks. And it's pretty much a plug and play fuel line kit. It replaces all the hard lines that go from the tank to the engine just with these, I don't know if it's actual PTFE, just nylon. It's, you know, that regular GM kind of uh, plastic fuel line. So this is gonna replace all the rusty stuff and it has all the OEM connections on it. So all we have to do is just disconnect those hard lines from the top of the fuel pump, disconnect them from the rail and just plug these in their place. And it also comes with a nice fresh fuel filter. Now the way these things are uh, plumbed up, the factory fuel lines, you got the hard line coming from the engine, runs down the transmission tunnel, and then it plugs into, I believe it's like the same kind of material. They're like hoses that come off the fuel pump itself. So where the fuel pump actually is in the middle of the tank, you have just hose coming off of it, and then it makes that connection to the hard lines at the end of the tank. So you don't even have to drop the fuel tank to change these. You can get to those connections right at the end of the tank. So um, I'm gonna link these down below in case you guys wanna check them out, pick them up. It is gonna be an eBay link, so I don't know how long it's gonna be good for, but um, let's hop out of side. I'll show you what I'm dealing with with the factory stuff, and then uh, we'll see if we get these things installed. So underneath Tahiti here, you can see our lightly crusted fuel lines. I've made a mistake. So it would appear that I bought fuel lines for a 1999 to a 2003 when my vehicle is a 2004. Now, at the time when I was looking for these, I couldn't really notice the difference between the two. And just now, after crawling under Tahiti, I realized that uh, the difference is mine's friggin' flex fuel. So there's a flex fuel sensor and the lines need to go into the flex fuel sensor before they go to the engine, which means these are not going to work but I'm going to make them work. So pretty much the only difference is Tahiti has a flex fuel sensor that the fuel line that comes off of, I'm assuming the feed that comes off of the tank or the return, I have no freaking idea how flex fuel works, but there's a sensor in line one of the with uh, one of the fuel lines and it detects the flex in the fuel. So my, um, my plan is pretty much to just delete flex fuel. So these lines will still work. The only difference is I'm gonna bypass the flex fuel sensor. So the feed will just go from the engine to the filter, out of the filter to the tank, and the, the return will just go from the engine to the tank. And that's it. I'm just going to unplug the flex fuel sensor. And um, I should be able to go into HP tuners, just delete it all together, delete the code, and then it'll be like she never had flex fuel. And um, normally I would be like, oh, well, it's a, you know, it should. If it came with it, you know, I'm not big, like when the, the air springs break, the airbags, I know a lot of people get rid of them, they just put springs in. I'm not really big on that kind of stuff. But Flex Fuel, this thing has probably never seen Flex Fuel. We don't even have E85 around here. And even if we did, I wouldn't be putting it in that thing. So um, yeah, let's just delete it. So you can probably see why this is a little bit easier without a transmission in here. I could just kind of sit under here and get to everything pretty easily. However, if your transmission is still installed, um, good luck. So we got our feed and our return, and then the EVAP 
is this guy right here. And that just connects right into the canister, which we can. I already got pulled off. So that's the EVAP disconnected. I'll just take it out of these clips, rip it out. I got to get in there to hopefully get those flipped off of the hard lines. And then our new ones, they just have those push lock fittings. And they're just going to boop, clip into there, clip into there, screw into the fuel filter. Here's Mr. Flex fuel sensor. It's going to be going bye bye. Now, unfortunately, I don't have my little tripod, so oh, this is gross. I'm gonna just kinda prop you guys inside my oil drip pan. All right, now, how exactly? I guess we'll start with the ease app. You have the, oh! I had the, the shift cable kind of wedged in there and oh, it unsprung me right in the lip. It unsprung and hit me right in the lip. Okay, that was actually really easy. I just one-handed the feed line on this rusty like pushing 20 year old vehicle. That's incredible. But what about the return? I think I need one of those little disconnect tools for the other one because it doesn't have tabs on it. <laughs> oh, that's not funny. A little spritz of PB Blaster. And she is freely spinning on the line now. She still doesn't want to move though. All right, I am going to pull all these 13s out. The one holding the filter, the one holding, uh, I think the ABS unit has to come loose. Ugh. I'm gonna try to pull this stuff down, maybe cut the hard line, and then maybe I could get pliers and twist the hose over and kind of yank it out that way, hopefully. I just caused a lot of problems. Oh, I don't like that. Oh no, I'm an idiot. I'm sure you already knew that. There's a bolt, the bolt head is on the other side. So that, oh, that's broken now. How important is it? how it's supposed to come out. Eh, I could weld that back if I cared enough. Well, it fought me, but I did manage to get the, uh, the return line disconnected from the pump. So everything's pretty much free and dangling. All we need to do is disconnect at the rail here. And, uh, yeah, that should be it. I just don't know where. We got our feed, we got our return. Where's the vapor going? Uh, that's this guy here. All right. I gotta see where the disconnect from the hard line is, but let's get the feed and the return off the rail first. Ugh, I'm gonna have to climb up in there. A little PB in there. There we go. There's our feed. Here's our return. Okay. Now this whole thing should just come out the bottom. There we go. And there we are. Flex fuel sensor and all. Like this part is pretty damn crusty, but this was really what I was seeing. I was more concerned with this. You can see how friggin' pitted that is, where these are crimped on. 
So that could be a huge friggin' problem, failure point. But yeah, that's it. We got rubber on one end, <laughs> rubber on this end, and then there's just this little section of steel line that just connects the pump to the rail. So um, let me show you what I did to get that uh, return fitting off, because this thing was a pain in the ass. Just wouldn't release. And then we'll uh, start getting the new ones kind of strung up in there. Uh, I just spilled gas all over my feet. So here's that return line that I couldn't get off. Um, this is the ends that would connect to the pump on the gas tank side. You can see there's like this little rubber grommet and there's just a, um, there's just like a lip of rust right in there. If I could focus correctly, probably if I don't move it and focus at the same time. But yeah, there's like this little ridge of rust in there. Cause this is supposed to stay inside the fitting. So what I ultimately ended up doing, instead of putting the, the tool in here to spread these tangs over the, the lip and slide the line out, I just push this in so the clip comes out with the line. And um, yeah, now I'm gonna try to gently separate this grommet and then I'm gonna slip this on our new return line with this clip and then that should hopefully just clip right back into the line that's off the bump. I did it. Man, awesome. Yeah, that was just, whew, that thing was just rusted on there. I'm using a, a 1964 it's drill bit, by the way, for this, because this is a 5 16th line. So I'm one size down. All right, I think that'll work. So here's our new return, but you can see what I'm getting at. So this clip would sit on there like that. It's a little bushing goes on like that and that should clip in. Hopefully this all lines up fine. But yeah, normally if everything came out how it would have, how it was supposed to, when I slipped the little thing in here, these tangs would have went out. This whole thing would have came off and this would have stood inside the fitting. So essentially when we install the new ones, all we're doing is click and that's the end of it. So hopefully that doesn't give us a problem. So next up, I need to grab this EVAP line off because I'm assuming our replacement for the hard line is going to just clip into that. So that's that. The only other thing I want to take here is our uh, holder for the fuel filter here. Oh, all right, simple enough. And then, yeah, the rest of this is all flex fuel junk that um i don't have the wrong kit so yeah essentially if i got the correct kit we would have had a a short line i would think they'd include these hoses too so we have a hose here and um i mean i guess i could probably like if i take the feed oh uh, no it's not gonna work the fittings are different i was gonna say i could have took the feed and just connected it to here but it has a threaded um threaded fitting on it for the, the filter that they gave, so that wouldn't work anyway. We can actually make our EVAP connection here. So this is what uh, goes down to the vapor canister. This is the end that was connected to the hard line that goes by the intake. So That's that. Now we get everything fished through. Perfect. All right, so I got the snakes in place and uh, they have some good length to them. But I think once the transmission is in place, I can kind of tie them together. I can secure them to the, the fuel line bracket that bolts to the top of the transmission. And then I can just kind of clip them up there, run them down here, maybe uh, put something right into the frame here just to hold them. And then, uh, yeah, there's you know, plenty of lanes to kind of move them out of the way, make sure nothing rubs on the transfer case or anything. 
Unfortunately, the fuel filter, it fits a little bit weird. Um, the way this line comes out, the uh, you can't slip it, center it on the bracket, so that's just kind of where it's sitting. Um, I might just try to redrill these holes, move it over, or just use self tappers and like a P clamp and just, uh, you know, add an extra strap to it. But there's that. Um, I ran the lines themselves, so this comes out. I ran it up behind the ABS unit and then just comes up here and it makes our connections. I'm in the factory spot. I already have our vapor line ran, so I just kind of loop that up around the canister to kind of take some of the extra slack out. And uh, before we just kind of prime this thing, obviously I can't start it. I got no uh, transmission hooked up. I guess I probably could start it. It's gonna be loud, but yeah, I got no O2 sensors either. I'm not gonna start it, but no, yeah. Um, we'll turn the key on, we'll prime it just to make sure that there are no leaks. But the last connection I need to make is right here for the return. I just wanna take you guys in close so you can see this. I am gonna link a video down below that I found on YouTube to get this in. So what I ended up doing is I put a rubber block in here for my quick jack and I had to drive that little rubber bushing thing that was on, that came out with my old return line, you know, with that little blue cl clip I was showing you guys. And uh, you probably, I don't know how well you're gonna see this, but like, yeah, you really can't see anything. I kinda, I don't have hands to hold the line, hold the camera and get a light in there. But pretty much that bushing that's in there I thought I could just slip slip that bushing and the clip on the line and just pop it in, but that's actually kind of pressed into the fitting. It was a little tight, it wouldn't just slide itself in. So what I ended up doing was I used this video, um, I'm gonna link it right at the top of the screen to so go check the channel, I was very helpful. And I used a nine millimeter socket according to that video. And I used this lid, this block here, I stuck in here and I just pushed this against here, put the nine mil socket on an extension and then I tapped that bushing back into there and you'll see with the nine millimeter socket, it fits in there perfectly. That went against the block and I tap, 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 tap until it fully seated. All right, so there we go. Our final connection has been made. Returns hooked up. Let's go ahead, uh, turn the key to on, prime the pump and see if anything leaks. See anything? Let's get one more. You know what? I forgot to tighten the fuel filter. But why isn't it leaking? Whoa! <laughs> well, um, okay. So there are definitely no leaks. After I tighten the, uh, the fuel filter, of course. All right, so Tahiti has some new fuel lines. As of right now, there are no leaks. And um, if you wanna see how that's gonna all get finished up with the, uh, those aftermarket fuel lines, how I'm gonna tie them together, you know, make everything neat and like not chafe on anything, uh, be sure to check out the next video when we install the transmission back in because that's when I'm gonna kind of fix all that stuff up. We're gonna take her on her first, you know, maiden voyage with this thing, see how it does. And uh, from there on out, we will be returning with the Trans Am because now that I'll have uh, the transmission off the engine stand, that's the main thing. I was waiting for the engine stand so I could get the Trans Am's engine mounted up and start tearing it down to do a few little upgrades. Last minute stuff I wasn't planning on doing. But uh, yeah, that's when Trans Am stuff's gonna return. If you are looking to do this job, I definitely recommend um, planning ahead for it. Definitely do it on a weekend. Uh, leave yourself a few days in case it's your only vehicle because I got lucky. The feed line came off, the return fought me, but I managed to disassemble it, not break anything, and I got it back together without any leaks. So that's gonna be the main thing, um, is those two fittings, depending on how rusted your vehicle is, um, that could essentially leave you stranded if you break one of those and uh, you need to take the thing to work in a few hours. But as always, I'm gonna link the parts I used down in the description, as well as that little video that I came across that definitely helped me getting that fitting back together. I am sweating, I actually gotta run to work right now. Uh, but I'm glad I was able to throw something small together, get a much-needed repair done to Tahiti. 
and uh, give you guys something to watch this weekend. As always, um, I hope you guys enjoy the video, and I'll see you in a few days.